the other day on Sports Center, they was like, um, tonight Toronto pays their respects to the greatest Raptor of all time, and they were referring to Kawhi Leonard. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's accurate? Um, I wouldn't say it's ac um it's hard to say, you know, it depends, you know, what viewpoint you see, you know, a person like Vince Carter, Kawhi Leonard did bring Toronto their only championship. True. You know, so you have to take that into consideration as well cuz that's but Vince never had a Fred Van Vliet. Um, he never had a uh uh what's my man name? Sakami Siakam. Siakam. Mm -hmm. Pascal Siakam. Uh, yeah. A factor, major factor. Then you got Van Vliet and then Kyle Lowry actually had 20-something points in the first half, mm -hmm. and they beat uh, a Golden State team without Kevin Durant and Klay Thompson. So, um, yeah, that, I had a gripe with them saying that he was the greatest Raptor of all time, being as though Vince Carter missed going to the finals by... It was basically a buzzer beater. He missed a buzzer beater against the Sixers. Yeah, and that Sixers, they also didn't have a lot of, you know, besides Iverson... That's all, yeah. Yeah, you know, so, <laughs> I mean, you can make that argument as well, but I, I definitely think, you know, uh, Toronto should show Vince more appreciation. I mean, you know, everything is opinionated nowadays. It's this person's right. opinion. Like I say, Kawhi Leonard, to bring a championship to Toronto, I mean, that's the first time a team outside of the United States has won a yeah. championship. So you have to take that into consideration. Like, I mean, that's, that's a major feat. And, but Vince Carter definitely, you know, to me, he was Air Canada. So. What you think? Of the, what you think about my Lakers right now? Oh man, it's, they are so stacked. Um, you stacked. Got LeBron James and AD, and I think the other night I looked like AD, LeBron, and Caruso combined for like ninety-eight points. <laughs> and I'm like <laughs> crazy, right? And then you got Dwight, you know, accepting his role, and there's really I'm no pressure on his shoulders. Right now. Yeah, he's playing well, and you got Javale McGee. You know, you got those guys protecting the rim. So come playoff time, <laughs> it's like <laughs> I think that I think they probably could run away with it if everybody's healthy. I don't. I I know we lost the first game of the season to the Clippers, and they didn't even have Paul George that night, but. I don't got the Clippers doing that with L.A. in no series. Um, I mean, we'll see. I think this year is the first year. It's a real toss-up. You know, every year you knew it was Golden State. Um, you know, you knew it was going to be Cleveland coming out of the East. I mean, right. nobody really saw Toronto doing their thing last year. But, you know, they they came and shocked the world, you know, with a national. I mean, they were pretty lucky because, you know, a lot of guys got hurt. When you're watching these guys playing, do you ever get the – or do you ever sit on your couch and say, man, I can get that nigga that work. He should be there. <laughs> no, nah, you know, um, I had my time, you know, to do my thing. You know, um, it's a different era. It's a whole different game. You know, I enjoy watching these young players, right. you know, come up and do their thing. Like I say, it's, it's just a totally different game. There's no power players no more. So it's a different era. Um and like I say, this year is the first year in the NBA where it's really a toss-up, where you don't know who's going to, you know, be the front runner. So it's going to be a really exciting season come playoffs this year. Being as though, you you know, you came up in the Maryland area, what was it like going to the same school that Lynn, Don Lynn Bias dominated? Oh, man. I remember meeting Lynn Bias. I had to be like five or six years old. This was back in... When PG Plaza used to have a best and you used to have to go down the escalator and I remember him buying some gold chains and my sister, she actually went to Northwestern where high school mm -hmm. where Lynn Bias graduated from. And she was just so excited to meet him. And you know, I'm a little kid, I don't really know what's going on right. at the time, but I'm like, you know, what's happening? Why is you know? And then she explained to me, Oh, this is Lynn Bias, blah, blah, blah. I remember meeting him and he was so cool and you know, he embraced my sister like he right. knew her forever. Right. And he was just a real down to earth guy. And, you know, everybody had the greatest things to say about Lynn, you know. Right. And it was such a tragedy, you know, that his life was taken so shortly, you know, due to, you know, cocaine use. And it's just it's just amazing what could have been. You yeah. know, everybody says what could have been, you know, would Jordan have been the same or he would have gave Jordan a run for the money and I hear that a lot. You hear that a lot? Uh yeah. I mean he did give Jordan a run, you know, you know, while they were playing a you know, UNC, business. yeah, Maryland, you know, the, the great competitions they had, but right. you know, just think about it, going to the Celtics with Larry Bird with that team, <laughs> Robert Parrish, Kevin McHale. Kevin McHale. Yeah. Like it was gonna be it was gonna be ugly, but you know, due to unfortunate events, 
his life was taken and are you um old enough to remember Baltimore Dunbar's dominance in high school basketball? Of course. I mean I've seen all the documentaries, you know, like I say I'm from the the, the D C side of Maryland, but right. you know, I, I know about those guys, you know, uh, you know, what they did. Uh I wanna say Keith Booth is now coaching, you know, Dunbar right now. Keith Booth, he was number twenty two for the, number twenty two for the he was for drafted the by the Chicago Bulls as right. well. He played could with shoot. Yeah, could play with Joe Smith, mm -hmm. uh, Dwayne Sipkins, X Re Hip, Johnny Rose. He was a part of that crew. Joe Smith was player of the year, right? Yeah, number one draft pick. Number one draft pick by Golden State, right? Yes, sir. Were you a fan of Joe Smith growing up? Of course. I mean, he was one of the reasons I wanted to go to Maryland. You oh, know, yeah? Just watching him and his dominance. You know, like I say, Johnny Rose, you know, from Southeast, went to Dunbar. Right. Um, those guys, they had an amazing team, you know. I, I remember we won the, the city title at Anacostia at Coldfell House. And I was like in the locker room, just looking around, like, man, I want to play here. Like, right. You know, I Did you know here. that you was going to be a, D, a Division One talent? Um, I knew Despite that I size, because size has a lot to do with it, but did you feel that, yeah, this, this, I'm going D1? Um, yeah, I definitely knew it. Um, like I say, I was just so determined. I only had one school in mind, which was Maryland, but I had to prove to them that, you know, I was, you know, dominant enough, that I was worthy enough to be a Terrapin, mm -hmm. you know, so, um, but yeah, I always knew, I mean, I always had, you know, as a kid, you dream of the NBA and the whole thing, you know, so, I mean. Out of all of those teams in the ACC, real rich history, real rich basketball history, who did you, is there a team that you dislike? Uh, um, of course, the Blue Devils, you know, we played Duke. <laughs> that was like our, our, our rival, you know, like. It, it got heated, you know. Uh, there was some, you know, things would happen with fans in the stands. Right. right. They do. Uh, what you know, was Cameron like? What was it like going down? Playing at Cameron was crazy because people, like, you see it on TV, but when you actually get there and you right. see the students up on you yeah. and in your face. They really like, be wilding in there? Uh, those little white boys, they be talking some trash, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> you have to look over, like, who are you talking to? Right. But, you know, like, they right there on you and they, right. they in your face, like, <laughs> these little Duke kids is probably going to school to be doctors and lawyers, but they yeah. in your face talking. Like right. a lot of you know trash, and it's but it's a great atmosphere, you know. Playing against Duke, you know, Coach K, legendary coach, right? One of the best to ever do it. What was the difference between playing in the NCAA tournament and the ACC tournament? Was 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 the ACC tournament more competitive than the field of sixty four? Um, I wouldn't say it was more competitive. When you playing in the ACC tournament, like you've been playing against ACC teams all season, mm -hmm. so you know what you're going against. The, the thing is, you playing three games in a row. Okay. So there's no break in between. Like in the NCAA, you might play two games. Get a you know, rest. If you make it, then you, you get a rest for a week. For play another two games. Yeah. So the ACC, if you go against a, a tough team in the ACC tournament, um, you could be going home the first day. Uh, we never lost the first day, but you know. In the semifinals, you know, we faced some tough North Carolina teams. When I was there, we never won. I remember um, my senior year, we lost the ACC. Y'all never won. Y'all never won that the uh, the ACC tournament. We never won the ACC tournament. Who was at Wake Forest when you was in college? When I was at Wake Forest, Antoine Scott. Um, trying to think, who else was at Wake Forest? I remember him so well because he went to Oak Hill. Mm-hmm. Uh, um. I want to say it was Darius Singala there. I think he was. Yep, Darius Singala. Yeah, Wake Forest, they wasn't that stacked back then. They had okay. some good players. But this was like before Chris Paul. You say right I got there. knocked by the, the Wolfpack. Oh, yeah, NC State. Who was there? Julius Hodge. I need to say that. Um, who else was there? Um, damn, I'm getting old. <laughs> so I <laughs> can't right. remember. Um, I remember Julius Hodge. Um, we had a kid, a Russian kid, Eftimov. Who else was at NC State back then? Anthony Grundy. Mm -hmm. uh, rest in peace. You know, he passed away some months ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, me and him went to Hargrave Military Academy together. So, um, 
but yeah, I can't remember exactly all the players, but they 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 had a good team that year. I think we we were just tired when we played them in the ACC tournament. Right. And I'm glad we did lose that game because we made our run in the NCAA tournament to win the national championship. And you see now um, in the social media age, people have turned basketball into a business outside of pro basketball. You got people training. You got people doing. Uh, you know, the AAU circuit coaching. It's just so many ways I've seen people package their basketball talents off the court. How do you feel about that? Or, or have you thought about a Lonnie Baxter summer camp or anything like that? Um, I definitely have. You know, um, I coached AAU for a little while. Uh, it's become so much of a business. It's like everybody's trying to, you know, get a coaching job or a shoe deal. Or, you know, um, when I played, it was just all about the team. You know, about the kids, about the individual, right. not not the individual, but about the, the team that you had and, you know, just competing. Um, it's so much of a business now. You got the shoe contracts, you know, you got college, you see what's going on with the FBI doing investigations yeah. and, you know, people are, some people are going to jail over, you know, money. I mean, anything where, you know, there's money, there's going to be corruption somewhere, so. they have, They've had a... Um there's been a change in some of the the the, um, the NCA laws where now athletes can market themselves and earn money. I think they can get paid for their likeness is what I'm hearing. You know? Yeah, I heard mm-hmm. that. Uh, from what I heard, it was only in the state of California. Yeah, but I'm it's pretty definitely sure, in California. I'm pretty sure sooner or later it would expand. So uh, give it some time, you know, see how things work out. But I'm pretty sure, you know, after a while, you know, all the players will be getting paid off their likeness, you know, which would be good, you know, for, for players because, you know, a lot of these players do so much for their school, mm-hmm. you know, the television rights and everything, and they don't see any of it. I think, you know, you know, kids getting paid for their likeness. It, it'll Does be good. that um, kind of like stack the deck for the West Coast colleges uh, based on recruiting? I mean, if a kid is being recruited to a school like, I don't know, Pepperdine or one of UCLA, any any of the West Coast schools, and he knows that he can make money off T-shirts with his face on them. That's got to be a better a better deal. I was in college with niggas that was on scholarship, and I used to have to buy them niggas pizza <laughs> sometimes. They wouldn't eat, they'd be in the dorm starving to death. Yeah, just got off the court, and you know what I mean. Ne- Who gonna order the pizza tonight? <laughs> you know what I mean. Like that's got that's that's rough at times, man. Like you want you you in school to get an education, but it's, you hungry and shit. Right. Um, yeah, a lot of these student athletes, you know, some of them are going to go on to the NBA, you know, some are going to play overseas, you know, some are going to be, you know, transitioning the business. Right. I think it's good because it'll give you a chance, you know, to market yourself, you know, to learn how to manage money, you know. Um, I mean, there's just so many things that, that are positive for it, but like I say, it's right now it's only in California, so like you were saying... Yeah, of course, you know, if you're getting recruited by, you know, a UCLA or USC and you want to make some money while you're in college, right? of course you're going to choose a school in California. That's why, you know, I mean, give it some time and I'm sure it'll be the whole NCAA after a while. Right. Magic Johnson has always been my favorite player. Do you have a favorite player? My favorite player? Uh, I came up in the Jordan era. I mean... <laughs> There's too many of you Mike niggas around, man. I Y'all mean, love Mike, man. Uh, <laughs> I don't wear nothing else. But, you a big guy. You a big, a big guy. guy. I don't wear nothing else but Jordan shoes. Cause, right. I mean, just coming up in the Jordan era, it's like he was just the greatest to do it, you know. Right. Um, you know, people always compare him and LeBron and Kobe and so on. Um, but, you know, Jordan, for me growing up, you know, somebody I idolized, you know, just the way he played the game, the way he... He dominated the way he carried himself. Was just, just a class act. I, I mean, seen so many, so many, so much Charles Barkley in your game. How does, how does I, I a, would, a two guard get? <laughs> I mean, like, how does he get that over? I'm over, not gonna over lie. Chuck. I, was, I was a Barkley fan, and I remember being mad. You know that that the Bulls. What was when it was that '93 when they beat the um the Phoenix Suns. Phoenix, yeah. I, I, I had the Barkley jersey, but I had Jordan shoes. And I, was like, <laughs> I really wanted uh, Phoenix to win that year because right. they, they were the best in the West. Yeah, and they just I got they, tired of Mike winning. They had, man. I mean, you get tired, but you got to take your hat off to him because the things he did, you know, the games he put together, the clutch right. shots, passing the ball at the right moment to the right teammates. The like it was just it was like just watching a masterpiece, and you know, just to be in that era. 
you know, a lot of kids missed out on the Jordan era, and, you know, that's why, you know, you have a lot of LeBron fans. Right. And LeBron is definitely, you know, great talent, you know, Hall of Famer, you know, could be the GOAT. But just growing up in that Jordan era, there was nothing like it. I seen a crazy interview by B.J. Armstrong recently, <laughs> and he was saying, like... Jordan's practice. Yeah. He was like, you know, the game was one thing, but he was really showing his ass yeah, in practice. He, he was saying, you know, practice was another thing because Jordan could really experiment in practice and get away with it. You right. Know? And... He was like the way he just hated to lose and he just took it to heart. You yeah. know, I mean, I could really see him in practice. You I know? could too. I mean, playing for the Bulls organization, you hear some things from, you know, people who was around during that right. area. And it just sounds like, you know, Jordan was just the intense competitor. Was he still around the organization somewhat when you were there? Would you see him? My rookie year, when we started training camp, I don't know if he was just at his house in Chicago, but he was in the training facility the first day of training camp. Um, I remember getting tape, and I walked in the training room, and you know he was like, "Hey, LB, how you doing?" And you know I was like, "Damn, Jordan knows my name." <laughs> That's all I was thinking. Like Michael Jordan knows my name, like, right? You know, and he was, you know, real humble guy. You know, he spoke to everybody that was in the training room. You know, the training staff, all the right. current players we had in the Bulls at that time. And, so he showed you love. Oh, most definitely. I, I, I. Seen instances or heard, you know, things where they said he wasn't so friendly. It's it's a it's a pleasure to hear that he treated you correct, man. Um, yeah, I mean, people gotta understand everybody's different. You know, some people may be a little arrogant. You know, some people may be a little standoffish. I right. mean, I mean, he's Michael Jordan. I'm sure he has to deal with a lot of stuff. You know, if you catch anybody at the wrong moment, you know, I mean, even me. I mean, I feel like I'm one of the most humblest, you know, open and welcoming people. But, you know, some people go through things, and if you're not having a good day and you don't want to be bothered, some people might label you as a, 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 a asshole yeah. or, you know, he's arrogant or this. But, I mean, you you don't really get to spend a whole lot of time with these people. You might meet them, you know, out in life, you know, True. for a few moments, but you don't really know the don't individual. Know. So. Right. Who, uh, who's, your, who's your starting five, greatest of all time, NBA? Greatest one, of all one through time. One through five. Um, center, um, Shaquille O'Neal. Right. Power forward. It's a toss-up between Malone and Barkley. Okay. Uh, I think those are probably two of the best that ever played the Take power forward position, but never won a ring. But right. It's a toss-up between those two guys because they were both fierce competitors. Right. You know, physical. Gorilla. Hit you in the mouth. Apes. And just Yeah. So, um, small forward, I have to say Larry Bird. Definitely. I didn't appreciate him until I became an adult because growing up, we just hated him. Like, he just did so much. And it, it's, it wasn't a racial thing. I'm a Laker fan, so you know how I felt about felt about the guard and Bird and all those. But, yeah, definitely mm-hmm. killer. So you got you, – you took Bird at the small, mm-hmm. power forward, Charles or, or, Charles or the mailman. Mm-hmm. Of course, Mike. Mike, at Shaq, two, Shaq. Shaq at the five. I want to hear who your one going to be. Um, <laughs> you already said, you know, you're a big fan of Magic Johnson, but, you know, Showtime. I mean, Magic Johnson, you know, just one of the great competitors, you know, all the right. championships, you know, battling with the Celtics back in those days. Mm-hmm. Like, if you watch them games, those games were intense. Like, Very. they were ready to fight, like, yeah. get it on, and... I applaud, you know, because today's game is kind of soft. Like, you can't really touch anybody or right. anything. And they used to go through battles, get clothesline, Like, they scrap. Like, right. I, I really admire the old school game, you know, and the way these, those guys play. We need a coach. A for coach. These five, yeah. Um, I mean, it would be easy to say Phil Jackson, mm-hmm. but I think that would be too easy. I never felt that he was a good coach. When I say that, it's not, it's not disrespect or, you know, not acknowledging his greatness. But mm-hmm. when you, you, you're famous for coaching the greatest players of all time, you coach Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, I mean, <laughs> Shaquille he, O'Neal. Yeah. Like, how much work do you got to do? That's not an easy job keeping all those egos, egos in the line, right? you know? So, I mean, it takes some type of skill to coach those those type of players and, you know, different eras. You know, you had the early 90s with the Jordan, right. Pippen, you know, the Horace Grants. Like, 
Yeah, he coached a lot of great players, but he had to manage it. You know, he had to put everything together. Right. Then, you know, the Kobe's, the Shaq's, you know, the Lamar Odom's, the Paul Gasol's. He's coached a lot of a lot of great players, you know, and he, he, I wouldn't say I would pick him as, you know, all time uh great coach. His name would definitely be in the conversation. I'm I'm loyal to the Lakers. I got to put Pat Riley on there for my, for my <laughs> Um I think um what's the coach that used to coach Detroit? Um Chuck. Chuck Chuck passed away, Chuck Daly. Yeah, Chuck Daly. Great coach. I think I would put him because, you know. Coach of the dream team. Yeah, he's just intense, fiery guy. Yeah. And, you know, like the, the, the bad boy Pistons, they don't get a lot of respect for the two championships they got. But they, yeah. they competed. They fought. Like, those were some scrappy teams. And that's 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 the kind of play, you know, that, that goes unappreciated these days. Last thing I want to ask you is um, tell me something about playing for the D.C. Assault. Um, I played a couple tournaments with DC Assault. I played for a lot of teams in the area. Um, DC Assault was the the top team, you know, back then. You know, um, Curtis Malone. Mm -hmm. You know, he's done a lot for a lot of guys in this area. You know, getting guys in the college, getting so many guys in the NBA, giving guys a shot. Um, you know, it's unfortunate. You know what happened to him and um, his situation. Um, right. You know. Um, and, you know, people say a lot of bad things about him, but, you know, Kurt was really a good guy. Those guys are like heroes. And, and where, I'm, where I'm from, and I'm pretty sure you share the same sentiments. You got somebody who's devoting their time, energy, as well as their finances into um, a basketball program. And you got to love them type dude. You got to love them that type dudes. Yeah, definitely. Like I say, they've done so much for, you know, so many guys in this area. You know, I mean... They put D.C. basketball on the map as far as AAU, you know, you know, with the DeMar Johnsons, you know, Keith Bogans, um, Brian Chase, um, who else? I mean, it was so many, like, they were so talented. Y'all deep, so, deep out here between yeah. D.C. and Maryland. God mm -hmm. damn. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just unfortunate, you know. Um, I guess, you know, after he went away, you know, the team you kind of broke up and went separate ways, you yeah. know. But, you know, he'll be back out here again and, you know, he'll have a second chance. You know, he's really a good person, you know. Um, you know, we judge people off the things they do. We all have a past. You right. Know? I mean, I've made plenty of mistakes in my life, you know, so who am I to judge anybody or anybody else to judge anybody, you know. I mean, so um, I'm just glad, you know, I mean, he will be coming home soon and, any more basketball in your future? Not necessarily playing, but do you got anything else to give to the culture of basketball? Um, Ball is life. It's still life. Definitely. Um, I don't know. Like I say, the game has changed so much. I mean, people always ask me, you know, why don't you coach or do this? Like I said, I tried the AAU thing, but I just didn't feel like, you know, it's, it's, it's so much of a business nowadays. It's right. not really... You know what I'm saying? It's not what it used to be, you know. And um, if I did coach, it would it would definitely be on a, a college level. You know, I think that's where I had most of my success. Right. You know, I think I could help. You know, you know a lot of college players. You know, play more like a, a back to the basket game because you know that hasn't really gone away from college. You still see some bigs, yeah. you know, that post up. You know, but I mean, you still got a mean drop step. Um, yeah, you know, I still got those big shoulders, so you know, but I think that's a lost art, man. Seeing the bigs get down there, Drummond from Detroit, he still plays big. It's mm -hmm. a couple guys that still play with their back to the basket, but I get pissed when I see Anthony <laughs> Davis shoot a three pointer. He hit four of them the other night. Um, I'll be like, man, I hate when that nigga <laughs> shoot a three, though. I mean, if you got it, you got it. You know, I mean, Anthony Davis is one of those exceptional talents that can step away from the basket, you know, catch lives. You can do it all. Um, but, you know, there's no more really fundamentals for big guys anymore. You know? Right. Um, and I would like to see that come back. Um, but, you know, until then, you know, this is what we have. You got to get a big man camp going, man. <laughs> Start teaching these pups to drop step, man. Like, you got to get the big man camp going, man. Uh, yeah, I've talked to some people about it, you know, but like I say, it's just so much, you know, right now, you know, I'm a car salesman, so a lot of my time, you know, I spend on the showroom floor, you know. But Nigga, you's a hooper. We got to get you <laughs> back on the court, man. Straight yeah, up. Definitely, you know, I mean, I'm always willing to help, you know, any 
you know, kids in the area, they need some help. People, you know, refer me to work out, you know, this player, that player. I'm always right. willing to help, you know, even, you know, the University of Maryland, you know, when they ask me to come, you know, talk to the guys, do whatever, right. I'm always there. But, um, like I said, if I was to do something in basketball, I think it would be on the collegiate level. Right. And, you know, I mean, we'll see what the future brings. When you win an NCAA tournament, y'all just get a trophy and that's it? Uh, you get a ring. Uh, yeah, they get you a trophy. Um, there's so much stuff they get you. You get watches, gifts. You still got your piece of the net? Uh, yeah. I saw my mother's house. I uh, got so many, you know, trophies from Maryland, jerseys. Um broken backboards, rims, you know. Shattering some shit? Uh, in practice, nothing in the game, so. You were shattering joys yeah. in practice? <laughs> yeah, nobody. So what the coach say when you fucked the backboard up? Oh, man. Um, it just happened one day after practice, just messing around my freshman year, and the backboard shattered. Two-hand joint? <laughs> I think I did a, a backwards dunk or something, just yeah. messing around, and the whole thing came down, like. Cut me on my shoulder. Right, <laughs> like, yeah, like on your glass. Jerome Lane. So after yeah. you shatter a backboard, of course, you're trying to do it again. Uh, yeah, you always try again, but <laughs> I, just, I was just, <laughs> I took the rim home and I kept it. <laughs> you took it home? Yeah, I took the rim home. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's one of the things I always remember. You've been a great guest, man. This really means a lot to oh, me. Man. Thanks and, for um, having me. You know, playing overseas, you know, I've, I've seen your work many a days, you know, um, just going on YouTube. And, yeah. You know, always, you know, I'm just thankful to be here because I always appreciated your work, you know. And, you know, there's so many, you know, rap artists and street right. legends. I mean, you really came a long way just with the people you interviewed and... It's great to see how you work. The same way that Michael Jordan walked into the training room and said, hey, hey, LB, what's going <laughs> on? I feel the same way, man, with you sitting here telling me that you appreciate my work. This oh, interview yeah. means a lot to nah, me. I've been following you for a long time. You know, like I say, playing overseas, you have a lot of downtime. You're right. in a foreign country. Like, you tune it you're in on the gully. YouTube and you just come across Gully TV. I've seen so many stories. I can't remember. Was it you who first broke the Duncan Hines story? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I did work on that, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so. I just interviewed a future street baller who uh -huh. played with Carlton Hines growing up. Uh -huh. so. so, yeah, I'm, I'm real familiar with you, and it's just a pleasure for you having me today. Yep, my man. We'll do this again sometime soon. Uh, I appreciate it. Of course, you. all right. My man, my, my God. God.